The offseason is finally here for Major League Baseball. The Padres discussion continues on Padres Hot Tub. And the winter is, interestingly enough, a great time to get involved in the Padres Hot Tub Patreon community. Why is that? Because uh, in this time, I think almost more than ever, social media has just become a treacherous place. Uh, one of the most popular websites has degraded itself completely. Others make it really hard to, to interact and find the conversations in the community that you want to interact with. But you've got a self-selecting group in the Padres Hot Tub Patreon community, a group of intelligent folks that are there to talk baseball 365 days a year, but also share many like interests with yourself. And uh, you can find a community that's welcoming, polite, not abusive, <laughs> and uh, a cool place to hang uh, in the Patreon community. We love our patrons. Um, we tend to, I mean, just today we had a, a, a lot of free agency talk come up and, and the Discord was alive once again after our brief little interregnum between when the Padres dipped out of the postseason and then the World Series actually ended. Um, you know, we have a lot of important milestones coming up just in the next couple of weeks. We have major awards that are being announced. Um, we're going to have the beginning of free agency in just a few days. Um, and everything is going to be a buzz there, you know, let alone discussions of, uh, you know, all the other major sports that are happening right now, movies, TV, books, um, you know, golf, uh, everything. So uh, come hang out with us. We're going to be doing some off season specific content, um, some movie watch parties and stuff. Uh, as we roll forward. So uh, come hang out in the Discord. Plus, our group therapy shows, which we used to give out on the regular feed, are now patron exclusive. So we've got Have a Drink, a patron exclusive show. We've got Group Therapy, a patron exclusive show. We've got Banter, our weekly show, a patron exclusive show. So come get a whole lot more content. Come get ad free content. Uh, you stop hearing these ads. And for as low as $5 a month, I mean, honestly, pretty good deal. Check it out. Patreon.com. Slash Padres Hot Tub. Welcome to the Padres Hot Tub, everybody. November 4th. Think anything big's going on this week? Nothing. But no. nothing and nothing too important. Um, votes are in for Silver Slugger. You know, released <laughs> and rookie of the year. Yeah, rookie I mean, of the, the year. Votes some are other, in. Some other stuff. The tabulation continues. Yeah, uh, yeah. And and we are here. I'm Craig with Chris and Rafey, your Padres hot tubbers. Uh, you know, last couple of weeks with the postseason continuing, kind of just a really weird spot to be in. Padre specific podcasting. Um, now we can start to trudge down the winter road uh, all together uh, as we peruse the season that was and look ahead to the off season that is already uh, quickly unfolding uh, in front of us. Uh, gentlemen, shall we start with just a temperature set on how you feel now that it's all said and done? The Los Angeles Dodgers won a full season championship. Our 2020 trope is now thrown out. Uh, they've already had the celebration. They've had the whole thing. The parade's over. Uh, the confetti has been power washed off the streets. Uh, the explosive, the exploded hand has been cleaned up. Um, <laughs> Jesus. Like, what, what are your feelings now on, on our season? in relation to how it all wound up. Um, I will reference as I frequently do on this show, letters to AJ, um, which is a great sub stack uh, for all of our fans to go check out. Very smart and insightful writing on the Padres. And um, they wrote over there that basically two things can be true. Um, that this could have 2024 was a monumental leap forward for the organization. And it was also a failure. Um, and, you know, it was a failure in the sense that 29 baseball seasons end every year in failure and only one ends in success. Uh, and that might be a harsh metric to judge by. But at the end of the day, it is our, 
you know, our raison d'etre. It is the reason that we do this. It's to win the big hunk of metal at the end of the year. Um, so, uh, and, and I also think in the spectrum of opportunities, this is probably the best, uh, chance that the Padres have had to win a world series since 1998. Um, I think it was a better chance. Yeah. Yeah. I think period. I think since 1969, the team became a major league franchise yeah, yeah i would agree yeah. with that i think this is their best chance they ran into historically great teams in 1984 and 1998 uh the best team they faced this year was the team that eliminated them so yeah yeah and i think we can confidently say i i don't know about we i won't speak for you guys i think that the padres were uh, the padres as constructed entering the playoffs post trade deadline everything like that they were the second best team this year no question. And according to some people, like, for instance, Kike Hernandez of the Dodgers, yeah. who had a quote when he, he was, I, I think he was on the field at Yankee Stadium with like confetti, yeah. like, and, and champagne on him. And, you know, he, he basically phrased the Dodgers postseason run as like a magical postseason run because they quote, Beat the yeah. best team in the Padres, Gross. beat the hottest team in the Mets, and then you know then we had to go and beat the mighty you know historically the legendary strong, you know, Yankees. Yankees, the legendary yeah. Yankees. <laughs> yeah. That's what it was. Um, and you know, I Dave Roberts today, you know, was interviewed on Bleacher Report and said that he thought that the NLDS was the real World Series, and so, um. I have more thoughts that I'm sure will will come out um, over the course of the show as we talk about Ben Lindbergh's piece in the ringer and stuff like that. But um, look, the Dodgers played the cleanest postseason, and that's what that's what it's all about. They didn't make mistakes, and two of their opponents shot themselves in the fucking face. So yeah. uh, and and they didn't then turn the gun on themselves too. So right. uh, I, I it's you literally just have to hand it to them and on to 2025. I, I completely reject Kike's and everybody who tries to like portray the Dodgers as underdogs. This was the team that was the favorite to win it all from the moment last offseason began to right now. You know, they were the favorites the whole entire time, like the odds on clear cut favorites because they have more resources and they had put a billion and a half dollars into the team. Joe Kelly talked about it a bit today about how they're the Dodgers, so they do everything really good. And I don't want to make this a podcast about all the shit the Dodgers say, but um, I do think it's good to just kind of know that that's what they are. And the Padres have the unfortunate reality of playing in the same division as a dynastic team with, uh, you know, all the resources in the world that isn't going anywhere. So Padres got to do their own thing. And that's what brings me anxiety in the coming of a new off season. Like what is the Padres thing going to be? Is it going to be ducking under the CBT for a year to reset those penalties, to reset things, to stop the accruing because the more years you consecutively go over the CBT, the harsher the penalties come. So are we looking at, um, you know, spending that puts them over a couple thresholds going forward, which is kind of what they need to do if they don't want to purge the roster of uh, guys under contract for more money? Um, that, that I, I'm feeling anxious, guys. Truth be told, you know, I, I think AJ um, will do some fun shit. <laughs> like, I think we're going to be entertained gladiator style like he's gonna get in the arena and do some things but um at the end of the day my anxieties now that that season's over and we look into 2025 are are the same that they're probably going to be forever which is what's the investment in the club and uh how creative is our guy gonna get there was a moment from 2021 off season to the Soto trade where it felt like we had elevated to a position where we could spend with LA. Yeah. 
And that was ridiculous. <clears throat> it was it was <laughs> fanciful at best. And and you know, I mean, honestly, I remember this time last year, both you and I, Chris, uh, being in our Discord saying to people, why not us? Or who's to say we won't spend more or boo to boo to boo. And, you know, we were wrong back then. Yeah. The the reporting was right uh, that they were going to cut payroll. They did it in a way that was creative and dynamic and still brought in players like King and Cease and Arise uh, at, at very low cost uh, comparatively. Uh, and the team wound up, you know, with their best shot ever in this creative year. So does that mean you have to pay the odd year penalty? In 2025, that's been the history of H.A. Preller in the 2020s is good year, pay for it, good year, pay for it, good year. You know, uh, can can we come back to that? I don't know. We'll get through all of those things. The Padres will have a competitive team no matter what, but I'm willing to accept, and I don't think it's loving the team because I hate the team up the road. To look at a situation where one team gets three hundred twenty million dollars and the other gets like six, or, <laughs> six, you know, six to ten, Craig. Yeah, and th- uh, one team that gets I don't know how many tens or hundreds of millions of dollars in sponsorship money from Japanese corporations, uh, and one that doesn't, you know. And, and look at that and say, okay, the Dodgers have about a half billion dollar yearly budget edge on the San Diego Padres. And that means that they can sign Chris Taylor to $15 million a year contract extension, play him not at all, and have it affect them not at all. Whereas we pay Eric Hosmer and it costs us like a starting pitcher because we yeah. don't, because we're still paying Eric Hosmer. That's the difference is they can make a gigantic mistake. And it's no big deal. We make a mistake and we've we've still got Wandy Peralta. You know what I mean? Like we 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 still have to hang on to that guy year after year, or Yuki, or pick your guy, you know, Xander. Fuck. Like, you know, you make a mistake and you're just stuck with it in San Diego. LA makes a mistake, they can just wash it over, paper it over, bury it in concrete, you know, and yeah. and, and move along. That's the story so of their yeah. success in 2024. That's exactly what happened. You know, they entered the season with uh, um, James Paxton as their number five, six starter, knowing that they are going to have three starters returning. And, uh, you know, they, 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 in essence, had two complete starting pitching staffs because they could pay James Paxton, what well, was 12 million or whatever, plus the CBT. You're paying $20 million for James Paxton. And, uh, you know, the Padres don't get to do that. And we, if we convinced ourselves that they could at one point, it's because we had a dynamic patron saint of the city. I, I, you know, I'm, I'm filing my hopes that, um, the ownership continues to operate in that way under something more likely than wish casting because we haven't seen otherwise. That's just all it is, man, is a long lifetime of Padres fan experience telling me there's a shoe about to drop. And, uh, you know, last year when they traded Juan Soto, I was immediately terrified that we were going to see more salary dumping in the the form of uh, Suarez getting traded or, you know, something like that. And now it's almost like like, that's the next card in the hand that we look at. And, uh, you know, it feels completely different now because you just want to see them compete again. You just want to see them get creative again. So, I, you know, I don't know. Here's, here's what I just think, bottom line. The Dodgers are going to win 96 to 180, 18, 120 games every year. Yeah. For the next 10 years. Yeah, you, know, you can or, you can pencil in them number one NL West. That won't always happen, but you can pencil it in, and yeah. you're not going to erase it more times. I I now. don't think we'll win one division title in Manny Machado's tenure in San Diego. I don't think we'll win one division title in Xander Bogart's tenure in San Diego. N- not one, not even one. And it's not the biggest deal in the world. 
No, it mm-hmm. really isn't. It doesn't really matter. But that's where we are. We're stuck in a division with IBM. You know, it's like we're stuck in a division with Walmart. Mm-hmm. And it's not a matter of how can you beat them in the regular season. If it was that, I would probably just bring an end to the show and say, what's the point? What What is our point? If we were in the English Premier League, this would just become a show about avoiding re- relegation, you know, and being the most mid franchise. Much, I mean, it, but it, we'd it never be, have a chance to win. If if it was purely about only winning the regular season, there would be no point to this. But it's not. There's a five game playoff series that anyone can win, and that's the great equalizer of of Major League Baseball. Yeah, like and, and Rafe he sent over a great article that kind of includes some of that from Ben Clemens talking about the chaos of the playoffs and how important it is just to be there. Yeah. Um, because uh, one of the thing that I really grabbed hold of in that article, Rafi, is that the Dodgers in winning two times in the past five years is kind of exactly what they should have, considering well, their investment and their their statistical output. It's a bigger sample size than that. It's actually it, it takes into account their whole twelve year postseason run. So for for folks who uh, you know want to potentially pause and read the article, uh, it's from Ben Lindbergh at theRinger dot com. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, I said Ben Clemens. No, uh, it's all right. Um, and it's uh, it's titled "Everything Went Wrong for the Los Angeles Dodgers Until Everything Went Right." And basically, like the the crux of the article is saying, kind of like what we were talking about with letters to AJ and the Padres of like, there's two things that are true about the season. Like it was both a big leap forward and it was a failure. Like you know, Ben writes, you know, that there's two ways to look at the Dodger season. Essentially, like the version one is they committed up you know 1.5 billion dollars they signed you know three future hall of famers you know yoshi nobody abimoto from japan like they built their super team you know otani wins mvp probably dodgers uh mookie betts leads october leads playoff baseball ops yamamoto delivered his best start in the world series freeman won world series mvp like everything went according to plan if you looked at it that way you look at it the other way you know, the Dodgers finished 20th in Fangraph's war in terms of starting rotation. Like, they were incredibly injured. Mookie Betts was pressed into being their starting shortstop. Like, n- a lot of shit did not go to plan for them. The The point of the article is that there is an immense amount of chaos that happens in the postseason. And what the Dodgers have in their 12-year, 12 12-season 12 consecutive postseason run is a large sample of small sample sizes essentially because that's right. all what we always right. that's what we always say about the postseason is that it's a small sample size and so what ben did was he went through the uh 12 seasons that the dodgers have been from 2013 to 2024 those are their 12 consecutive seasons of making the postseason and he went to their preseason world series odds uh and then also their world series odds on the first day of the playoffs and he added them up cumulatively. So, you know, for instance, like 2013, before the season started, they had a 10.2% chance of making the, of, of winning the world series. Uh, and then on the first day of the postseason, they had a 9.9% chance. You go through all the way for every single season, you add it all up. And what you find is that cumulatively over the course of those 12 seasons, the Dodgers should have quote unquote, yeah, should in in air quotes should have won by preseason odds 1.7 World Series, but by first day of the postseason odds they should have won 1.99 World Series in those 12 years, and they've won two, so they're right on track. And this is like you can you can read it this like from a bunch of different ways, which is one, if the Dodgers had not won the World Series this year they would be looked at as a colossal failure. That's true, number one. Number two, it also shows you that you can make the t- the postseason 12 years in a row, and you can have arguably the best team in most of those postseasons. And in those 12 years, you quote-unquote should have only won t- twice. Like, that. It, it, this isn't the Golden State Warriors. This isn't the Patriots. Like, it's just, it's just not like it. Baseball is a completely different game. 
So all that that matters is that you get as many bites of the postseason apple as possible right. year after year after year. That's the only thing to take away from this, in my opinion. Right. And that's kind of the rant I ended the last show on, right? Which was, don't tell me about all in. Don't tell me about we got to win it next year. And if it's if it's not next year, it's never. The rest of the decade's a punt. It's only got to be 2025. So burn all the resources. Damn the torpedoes. Put it all on the line. At the end of all of that, doing all of that, where we sit with LA in the division, all of that is still to get to a best two out of three in order to get to a best three out of five. So it's it's ludicrous to think that there's going to be one pure shot and that if you just take the purest shot, that that's going to be your... Ch- no, it's it's take as many dirty shots as you can. Yeah, that would have been 2022 if, if it was, you know, before, you know, before Tatis' suspension came down, you know? Or it would have been 2023 with Juan Soto or... Right, right. Yeah. We tried to take a pure shot in 23 and it didn't work. You know, 22, same idea. It didn't work. 24, found a more balanced roster. It worked. So there is an opportunity for the Padres... Maybe the better way to win it all is to have a slightly worse year and and get that six seed, you know, get that glorious six seed, get outside of it. Let someone else beat up L.A., you know, like let someone else do the dirty work. Maybe the perfect run is one where you don't face the blue one year or, you know, who knows? Just keep trying to get in. Keep trying to get in. This organization is committed to that path. They've said so so many times. Their debts and obligations indicate that they have no choice but to be on that path for the remainder of the decade and beyond. So let's see how many times they can do it, boys. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And and I by the way, I think the Padres are a playoff team next year. And uh, you know, we'll see what 2026 brings. But like this is a team that is more than capable of, you know, they they're never gonna be able to build a better team on paper than the Dodgers. Like it's just not possible, but they can build a playoff team on paper every year. And that's all that matters. Like that's, that's actually great news for us because if we, you know, if we had the same odds as the NBA has in terms of the superior team advancing, we'd be fucked. Like we would end the show, Craig. Like yeah. the point is, is that baseball is stupid. And so we can do this show and it, when we can and we can wish cast because truly anything can happen. Indeed. Well, anything can happen when it comes to a playoff series. When it comes to the offseason, not every not anything can happen. There's certain very specific draconian money driven things are going to happen. The rich are going to get richer and the poor are going to screw up. Um, the Padres are going to be a different looking team in 2025 because they're not going to have their shortstop. Um, They're certainly not going to have their left-handed closer. uh, And they probably aren't going to have their left fielder. Um, Let's start with Ha Sung Kim, who did the most predictable thing possible and declined his side of an $8 million mutual option. In doing so, he immediately triggered a $2 million paycheck from the Padres, get paid $2 million to not play for you. Amazing. Um, And now he gets to be a free agent. Um, All the talk about a pillow contract for Ha Sung Kim, I want to kill it with fire right now. Mm. Okay? I want I want to murder this with fire and let it never and, breathe and again. And you're using the Scott Boris terminology of the pillow contract being that, like, one year carry over just because he's kind of hurt. You know, you guys need that nice little comfort of the pillow underneath you. Right. Um, how in any way would it benefit the San Diego Padres to pay more, significantly more? Because remember, he just turned down the eight. He gets yeah. the two. You're not going to sign him for six, right? And there's going to be multi-year contract offers out there for Ha Sung Kim. That's an absolute guarantee. So if he was going to sign a one-year deal here in San Diego, it's got to be at a market rate. You want a little bit of a softener? Okay. 
but let's just give Ha Sung Kim fourteen million dollars. So to, I thought to, it was interesting that he did not get qualifying offered, which I think is twenty one and a half million dollars. Tw- twenty eight, twenty point something, but yeah. Yeah. So that tells me the team desperately does not want to get stuck with him at the position at that number, right? And then if you look at um if you look at Fangraph's free agent pre- projections, that's right around the AAV they have him at. Um I you know, I trust Fangraphs a lot and I I think that they're they're more correct than some of the other places. I'm also cross cross checking it with uh um MLB trade rumors. Fangraphs has Hassan Kim as their ninth ranked free agent. MLB trade rumors has him at 43 and they estimate he's going to get a one year, $12 million deal. And that, I think that's way off. I think that's well short. Um, but I do think it's going to be somewhere in between five and one. Like, I, I think it's going to be closer to five than it is one. Okay. So just with, with that, l- let me just finish this, this argument. Sorry. Why would you give Ha Sung Kim, who is not going to be able to play at all until a minimum of May, potentially all the way till July, why would you give him a raise to come back to your team, rehab in your facility, come back, play half a season, and leave? Well, I mean, they were like, like the raise is based on the fact that they were severely underpaying him. Well, they took a risk on him, you know. Sure, yeah. like I they agree, brought him across. Like, both things are true. Yeah. However, he was fairly paid for the time he was here. He's now twenty nine, and another team needs him more than us. We need another short. We need a shortstop for a year. Uh, but Kim can't be relied upon to play at his level next year. He's coming back from a shoulder injury, so. The idea that we're going to get him, the people thought, oh, well, you know, he loves us. We'll get him at a discount. We'll get him at a discount to the market because he wants to come back here and he wants to play for us. I don't see any scenario where that happens. Willie Adamas is the number one shortstop on the market and Ha Sung Kim is the number two shortstop on the market. Willie Adamas gets to sign with one team. That team is L.A. He's going to sign with L.A. And then San Francisco is going to try and sign Ha Sung Kim. And if it's not them, there's about a half dozen other teams that absolutely could sign Ha Sung Kim to a multi-year contract. He has hired Scott Boris. There's no scenario where a one-year deal either makes sense for Kim, but more importantly, it doesn't make sense for San Diego. You just said the thing that changed in between maybe he'll take a deal with San Diego, he loves us and all that. But then he went and hired Scott Boris. And you don't you don't do that if you're taking the deal with the team that you're comfortable with. Absolutely not. So I he's gone. God, I mean, he, he's gone. And here's the yeah. other. Here's the last thing. All right. I talked about this just a little bit on the radio today, but like because we've watched every year of Ha Sung Kim and every game of Ha Sung Kim, we've seen Ha Sung Kim overpowered by the fastball at the top of the zone many, many times. We've seen all of his errors. You know, we've seen his base running misplays. We, we've seen all the times that he didn't come through for the San Diego Padres, all the times that he felt like kind of a really good second tier player for the Padres. But the evaluations, the metrics were built for Ha Sung Kim. He plays good defense at an elite position. He brings speed and power to the game. The metrics are always going to love Kim. I think the metrics actually paint him as a slight, just a slightly better player than he actually is in reality. As such, in a in a in a market that is driven by analytics more than it ever has been, Kim is the darling of the market, as opposed to being someone that they'll poke weaknesses in. He's a darling of the market. I feel like it is ninety nine point nine 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 that he is signing elsewhere. And he will do so, you know, pretty soon. Yeah. I was talking. I don't think he's a Padre. No, he's not a Padre. I think it's quite likely that he's a giant. Um, And if not, I think I was just talking to one of my best friends who's a Yankees fan who said he would love to have Ha Sung Kim after watching Anthony Volpe fumble 
a sure. like a double play ball in game five, you know? Braves? I mean, I can see so many teams jumping on him. I mean, it, it, he's going to have a robust market, and that's why I don't think I, – I, I completely agree, Craig. I, I don't think he's getting a one-year deal. Um, whether he gets that five, I don't know. He, he did not, he played his way out of the Dansby contract, unfortunately for him. But, um, yeah, the, the, it's not going to be a thing for the Padres. Padres have, uh, that, but getting to that, like the, the shortstop market while pretty robust at the top fades away really fast and the Padres are going to need somebody playing the position. It's his name is Xander Bogarts. Yeah. He will play shortstop next year. Cornerworth will play second. And unless they trade him, Arise is going to play first. And that's going to be our team. Like, and Bogarts is Man, going to. Um, yeah. No, he's going to cement his legacy next year as not the shortstop of the Padres. And then we'll pray for DeVries in 2026. I mean, I, I've already resigned myself to that path. Who, who the hell are you going to get? Unless they come up with some kind of whiz-bang trade. You know, yeah. who, who the hell are you going to get? And, and and here's the other one. I was thinking about this the uh, today. Earlier in the summer, I thought something crazy. Now I'm, I know I'm wrong. They're not going to bring in Merrill. What about the other guy back there who's played no shortstop? No chance. Neither one. Neither one. Wh- because if, this. Wh- what if they want to? So what? Doesn't matter. Because mm. Leo DeVries is on this team to be their next shortstop. Why would you bring Merrill in for a year to be shortstop and then move him I, back? AJ Preller signs the best shortstop he possibly can in any given year. I like I'm counting on for Leo DeVries for for next year is is really really uh jumping the gun on a guy who is 18 years old. I'm talking about two years, you know, 2026. But yeah. That's um, two years from now. He's 18 years it's old. Still, be it's still pretty fast. That would yeah, still be cra- a it's, that's, faster that's, that's, rise than Merrill. Yeah. Merrill no. started this year at age 20. I mean. Sure. I, 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 yeah. I just think that the, the, the market isn't robust unless you're at the top. So unless you want Nick Ahmed, uh, internal options such as Xander Bogarts or the other guys, and I'm like, if they want to do it, I'm more open to it than if the club's trying to just uh, fit them wherever is convenient. You know, if if Nando um, it, wants it, I, I'm more wanting to put in that direction because the free agent market for corner outfields way more robust than shortstop. Yeah, I don't see it happening. I think those guys are outfielders now, and I think they're outfielders for good. And I think if Merrill was going to become the shortstop, that's a major story that is going to come together. Now, if they want to make that decision and go that direction, they do. But my problem with that is I don't see how you put Merrill at shortstop in his second big league season and not keep him there the rest of his time. You can't just bounce him back and forth, back and forth. And if DeVries is part of your plan... He's part of your plan at shortstop. He can't be your second baseman because then it's Bo- the Bogarts is over there. You know, he, he he's not going to be your first baseman. It, we've got guys locked in to other positions. He's got to be the shortstop. So, well, it's, I, it, it's just robbing Peter to pay Paul. Like, OK, like you want to move Merrill to shortstop? Great. Who's your fucking center fielder? Yeah. Like, and that who's, your right right field? who's your right fielder? Like, if you're going to move Tatis back, like it doesn't like it, it doesn't matter. Like I, they're going to. The the thing about shortstop is that I think of all the positions we've discussed, except for catcher, like it's the one you can be the most justified in putting a shorthanded glove there who's not going to be a good bat, but like will play rock solid defense and your team can theoretically weather it in the way that you're constructing your roster. And they do have a lot of those guys who can play there for very cheap, like and there's there's merit to it. Um, I don't know if that's the route that's going to be desirable. I don't like know if that's Brandon the route Crawford, the like, like who? No, like I, I'm saying, like not this person, but I'm saying like a Angelton Simmons type, like or like, uh, uh, okay, like I can't believe I'm invoking his name on on Padres hot tub, but like f- remember when Freddie Galvis came over, 
And it's like, what the fuck is Freddie Galvis doing on five this team? Five straight series wins, baby. Freddie five Galvis. Five straight series. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> hang, the, hang the banner. Hang the banner. But like, like Freddie Galvis like, kind of knew how to play shortstop, you know, as opposed to, yeah. do we think Xander Bogart still knows how to play shortstop? I don't, I, I don't know. Like, the, the, I, I do feel a little silly having this conversation because like the team made its bet. They made its bet on Xander Bogarts and Jake Cronenworth to be their middle infielders. Like, you know, like, so, uh, like, they're not going to be able to trade Xander. They might be able to trade Jake Cronenworth. Probably not. So it's going to be them. And all things considered, it's, it's not the worst thing in the world. Like, there are, mu- I mean, like, I, I think that there are, like, the freaking Dodgers had to make their right fielder their shortstop this year. Like, you know, there are other things that like are worse than Xander Bogart's playing copy and paste, shortstop. baby. <laughs> yeah, right. Exactly. That's what we call the read plan. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I think we just prefer not to because there are <laughs> theoretically other options. The, the thing is, man, I have been outspoken against moving Tatis back to the infield. I, I, I think moving Merrill to shortstop would, would, would be terrible because he's such a good center fielder and they're hard to find. It, it all comes down to internal data, and that, that, can, that can be um, they know what a, a, an individual is going to want, and they're also going to know uh, who's on the market that, that fits what they want. Like, Nick Ahmed finished the season as a Padre. He's a free agent. He's kind of the type of guy you're talking about, Rafe. Um, in in, in as being as far as being sure-handed, it's just do we like do we want that? And I, I it it it's not the biggest hole on the team. Like replacing Joe Musgrove is going to be more important, I think, than who they replace Hassan Kim with. Fair enough. Um. Shall we move to the other key free agents? I mean, I think I, I forget if I said it on the last show or not, but if the market respects Jerks and Profar, Jerks and Profar is gone. He's yeah. gone. There's there's no way that we can afford to pay Jerks and Profar $15 million a year to be the same player um, or to to bet on him being the same player. Now, if you can guarantee me a 380 on base percentage, I'll pay Jerks and Profar a pretty decent amount of money. Um, but that's not a guarantee. His career is closer to 330 than 380 and uh i think there might be a couple of teams that might be interested in jerks and and in making that bet this time around and i'm kind of starting to steal myself to the idea that he was here for a good time and not a long time and or we've got to get him back from the next team once he tanks there and realizes that he's got to come back oh (laughs) That's the thing. He made $8 million a year seem like a really horrible deal. And now every, um, you know, pundit or prediction place has him getting twice that AEV. So I, I don't, I don't think that's a real market for Jerickson. I think major league baseball is going to treat it differently than we are looking at the, the F war, you know, I think they're going to look at what happened with Colorado and his second half of his 2024 season. And they're going to, I think it's going to be a cooler market. Uh, you know, Keith Law ranked him super high again. And if you'll remember in 2023, Keith Law had him ranked as the 11th best free agent. I know. You know, they don't learn. Um, but Nick Martinez is getting $21 million. So who knows, man? Major League free agent is free agent market is complete bonkers. I just, my, my question, I guess is like, let's do the wish casting thing. And let's say that jerks and profar was willing to take a team friendly deal to stay with the Padres. And like, you know, right now, like fan graphs is predicting profar gets somewhere along the lines of like three years, $45 million somewhere in that neighborhood. Um, so what would a team friendly deal be three years and 35 million, let's say. So he's getting about 12 mil a year. Can the Padres even afford that? Like that's, that's going to look like a terrible deal in two years. I think the, the team friendly deal is like one year at 1 million with, with some incentives. 
but then, then no, but then friendly. player options for the next two years to drag down that. Well, you know, AV. AJ's down for that for sure. Yeah, but some yeah. reverse risk so, bills. Yeah, yeah, you drag down the AAV on the next few years, and then if Profar turns into a pumpkin, he still gets you know eight million or whatever you know, you you land at. That like that's where I see it going, man. I I love watching him. He's a tough player for me because like he brings joy to the game. He is an absolute pit bull in the dugout. You know, we see the team rise to different levels of competitiveness, but then we also see jerks and like take at bats and you like know his power is going to go away for three months at a time. And it, it's tough. Like, and I think the market is going to reflect that. I like, I would be really like jerks. if he, you're going to get paid, brah, take the deal that that happens in November. You know, don't push this till February. Otherwise, you ain't going to get that money. Yeah, I just keep coming back in my head to um, one of the things that was said on Have a Drink, which was just like, if you bring these guys back, does that make you a better team? Or or is it actually maybe a bigger risk to to count on guys that you hit lightning in a bottle hitting lightning again in the same yeah. bottle? You guys know that Jock Peterson, who absolutely destroys his platoons, um, is is slated to make, uh, you know, half of what Jerickson is. His projection is two year, 24, 12 AAV. And this is a guy who had, had an over 900 OPS now, albeit only in the platoon. But, you know, you, you can get a you can get a guy to hit right handed pitching you know, pretty easily on the corner. So like, there's sure. just, a, there's other options at corner outfield. Like it, it's a more robust, it, like it's, it's a better market for the team. Jack Peterson also just smashes toilets wherever he goes. It's why he's on a one-year deal with every team. <laughs> they just can't stand the stink by August. <laughs> They're just like, forget it. Get this guy out of here. That's why he's, he's like, on every, he only, every team he every only year. He eats Chick-fil-A. Yeah, that's it. Just the sauce. He just just puts that sauce in his coffee every single oh. day. And that's how he goes by. And that's why he's on a different team every year, but still hits really well. Um, yeah, I mean, there's other ways to build a team other than just saying the guys that we have this year are the guys that we must have forever. I think the thing that's going to hurt this team throughout the decade are decisions we made at the beginning of the decade to say we need these guys forever. Um, you know, as such. I'm okay with moving on. I I don't love moving away from Profar, to be honest with you, which is a complete departure from this time last year. Yeah. But uh I don't I don't love it. I don't I don't think it's gonna make the team better chemistry. I don't think it's gonna make the team better motivated. Um, I like our motivation with Jerickson. You know, I, I like the idea that we're gonna come to play with Jerickson on the team. But I think other teams might recognize that a little bit uh, as well about him, or they might more than they did two years ago. Either way, the only way we get him back is if the market disrespects him and, and just doesn't have a deal out there for him. And when you look at the left fielders that are available, again, I have a hard time making that case that there's you know five or six guys that are going to fill holes before somebody comes around to Jerickson. Yeah. Tanner Scott, he gone. He gone. By the way, he should be gone. We're paying Adrian Morahone, Yuki Matsui, and Wandi Peralta mm. to be left-handed relievers on this team in 2025. Like, those, those are set costs that are baked into the Padres already. How could we pay for a fourth left-handed reliever? You can't. I mean, he was, he's such a fantastic piece for dealing with the Dodgers, like almost specifically that it's, I'm going to hate it when he goes to the giants uh, or the diamondbacks. But um, no, you said it like he's going to cost close to what hater costs. AAV. He may not get the, the time, but he's going to, he's going to be super expensive. And uh, uh, Robert Suarez, Deal looks better and better each day. Yeah. Um, 
you know, there's other free agents that potentially could come back. I think Agashioka actually makes a lot of sense on a low cost mm-hmm. deal. 35 years old, bridge to Salas. Um, I think Solano you could get for a million bucks. There's no reason not to have Solano back on your team. Um, you know, all things considered, Peralta is really fit into the team quite well. And as a fourth, fifth outfielder, he's not a bad guy to have around. You can still find another guy like him. You know, it, David Peralta does kind of grow on trees in a sense, in terms of there's always five or six guys like that available. But, what about Martin Perez? Uh, it depends on what he wants, but I could see it. I mean, this team needs a starter or three, you know, and, and then then you really get into the bigger questions. Like I saw you you guys uh, dropped in our chat, you know, like Blake, UC Kikuchi, um, Nick Martin. Nick Martinez just got a qualifying offer from the Reds. I don't know if he's going to accept it, but that's a $20 He's going to accept deal. it. He's going to he, accept it 100%. He should. He should accept it. Yeah. Uh, he, he, he should accept that deal. Um, if there's a world where the Padres are, are spending and they, they want to buy Blake on a on a two year deal or something like that. I mean, talk to me about it. Uh, Kikuchi. I don't know. Maybe, but team doesn't, you know, Joe Musgrove's not going to go on the restricted list. Team's going to pay that 20 million out. So, yeah. Uh, we, we don't really have a ton of latitude in this year. Do you guys think we're going to be players for any free agent starting pitcher? Yeah. I, I just think it'll be an off brand name like Spencer Turnbull or something like that. Mm-hmm. Um like uh and like Kyle the best Gibson. case is like trying to go after like Walker Bueller, but I don't that, that feels icky, but like that that's like where I think their their best possible level of free agent starting pitcher could be. I mean, I, I guess Craig, what is your counter that they're going to just <laughs> yeah, use their, like they get a widow their... a starting pitcher out of hay? Yeah, they're Brito, Vasquez, Waldron. Oh, hey, you just named three fifths of the starting rotation next year. <laughs> <laughs> Am I kidding? I, I mean, hope so. Yeah, I hope you're kidding. Who's who's under contract for the Padres next year? That's uh, the free agent started yesterday. You, but who is we have Dar- under contract? Darvish King, Cease. That's three guys. Darvish yeah. King, Cease, Waldron. Vasquez. Brito. Okay, wait. You only need five. No. I mean, you need more, but to start the season, you need five. There's five. There's your rotation. No. King, Because Cease, if that starts as your rotation, it's Darvish. only going to get worse. Those five guys are going to pitch 700 innings plus <laughs> for the team next year. At least... <laughs> Tell me Adrian Morahone or something if you're going to. No, throw we're not at trying me. that again. That's how his elbow was. <laughs> no. I, Chris, I, I love how, like, in real time, you realize the gravity of our, st- our starting rotation situation where you were like, wait, but that means things will get worse. Like, let the dooming waters just slowly <laughs> soak you in, the- let it consume you. <laughs> that's, that's the thing man like i'm also like pro like kind of trade cease and that makes the problem even like way worse like it it unties the torso from the rest of the scarecrow no, you're not D- you're depends not who you cease. get depends sorry, who you guys. get sorry guys depends it's not happening get. it's not happening no it probably isn't they need yeah, him and if they're gonna make if they're gonna go to the playoffs they need dylan cease to cover 180 innings like he did this year or at least 150 innings and then also, you're going to get the qualifying offer on him in 2026. And then that'll Valid. be the draft pick that comes back. Just like you're going to get it with King. So, like, you know, I don't know. No, I like, could see us signing one fringy starter. Like Spencer Turnbull is the guy I look at. Like AJ's always in on one on these guys that are the darlings of stuff. And, um, you know, kind of that that murky water between starting and reliever. I'm pretty sure he only started this year. Um, I could be wrong on that, but like that, that's the type of guy, you know, he was in on Fetty last year and didn't get him. And then, uh, you know, so, and then, and then did his trade thing. So 
yeah, I could see them doing that, and I could, or I can see them, you know, trying. Maybe he to, trades to for get... Crochet. No, he tried all last season. There's some no. framework of a deal there. I don't like it. Why? I don't Why? Think so, I didn't uh, like it in the middle of a season. He's already a converted starter now. You don't have to worry about the conversion. Conversion happened. Yeah, he's now just a young electric left-handed starter. Man, that's just an elbow that has been redlined. I don't. I just and the, the expense is going to be crazy for two years of control for the guy, considering his first arb number is going to be so low. Like, yeah, it just feels like the type of thing that can really, really, really hurt you on that five-year plan while shooting for that two-year plan. Fair enough. Fair enough. Well, you know what doesn't hurt you on the five-year plan at all, buddy boy? Waldron. <laughs> Vasquez Brito Ryan like I like Ryan Berger has a, a sub 10 ERA in the Arizona Fall League so why not we're gonna lose him in, him in the too. rule 5 draft maybe I'm not sure we have to protect him um but yeah it, we actually have in-house guys who started for the Padres last year Matt Waldron was good for the Padres for half a season Last year, Randy Vasquez was a passable major league starter last year. They're young. They're free, essentially, in in the parlance of baseball. They're basically free. And I expect those two guys to be two starters for the Padres in 2025. And I don't think it's a disaster if they are. I mean, if Matt Waldron's done and, and he's complete toast and he's a 70 RA the rest of his career, then it's bad. But if he's got anything in there, then, you know, we've, we've got three good guys up top and then we got those guys four or five. It's not the worst thing in history. Hear me out. Justin Verlander getting taught a knuckleball by Matt Waldron. You, we could just write fan fiction on Tumblr if you if we want. <laughs> like we can. <laughs> <laughs> And then, and then what happens? <laughs> I don't know. Aliens with lasers, I think. I think there needs to be a romantic triangle here. Oh, yeah. Justin said yeah. it going well on the romantic side for a long time. Could Matt steal a certain voluptuous <laughs> lady's heart? <laughs> um, I don't know, man. It's the fun of it. It's like the fun, like the fan fiction is the fun of it. I try not to get, call anybody too crazy with the fan fiction. Besides thinking, um, Eric Cosmer is a good baseball player. Hmm. Um, I, let's see. I've got two things left on this menu. Fringe chat. Who are the French guys who could make the roster? I think Aggie Rosario is making this roster. I think he's a lock, bro. I don't think that's yeah. fringe. I think that's lock. Yeah. I don't know about Terso or Nellis, though. They've never given him a chance. I think we might trade him. Well, and also, it, Eggie's either going to be making the roster or he's not going to be in the org anymore. Like, they'll right. be trading him. Yeah. For sure. And, well, I mean, wouldn't... I, I Isn't Terso... Like, he signed a minor league deal last year, but I, I'm pretty sure he just got added to the 40-man, so they can do whatever they could for him as long as he's there. Um... I mean, Brandon Valenzuela is due up next. There, there's not a lot of fringe guys. All the fringe guys are playing for uh, Chicago or Florida. Yeah. Um. <laughs> there's not a lot there, guys. We traded it all. Yeah. We traded it all away. They're not coming up. We have no Marcy. We have no Paulie. These guys are not knocking on the door anymore. We got two superstars coming up and we got a a bucket full of of 99 cent store value items. Otherwise that you can sift through and see if you can find something slightly less dusty that you can enjoy. Yeah. A lot of scratchers. Do you think they trade? uh, We didn't put it in the menu, but I also think that Luis Camposano has got to, got to be gone. I think they got to, I, I like I I don't think that he is going to be. I, I think he's a valuable piece, and there's a lot of veteran free agent catchers on the market. Uh, Higgy, you can give another year or two for the bridge to Salas. Um, no, he's catching won't... for us. <laughs> we don't have any money. The money's yeah, gone. I'm, 
I, I don't like the idea of getting rid of the inexpensive options. You, the, uh, I haven't loved your wish list on the show. It's like starting pitcher, we've got affordable guys, and catcher, we've got an affordable guy. I think we should no, work on the like spots I'm, where we I'm, don't have affordable guys. I'm definitely going a little dark timeline with my offseason guys, like straight up. Like, uh, <laughs> like when, whenever I did the, the OOTP, my offseason was to get a little chaotic when you don't make expectations or when you come close. Um, I, I think AJ Preller is going to do the same, frankly. Well, who's to say about AJ Preller? Because this rube, this rhubarb over here, this hayseed is getting the wool pulled over his eyes, going down to the Dominican and just <laughs> signing Don Draper to deals. Just ma- making verbal agreements <laughs> with a 14 year old hey, who listen, drove uh, the team bus onto the complex. Of like, all the trouble AJ Preller could have gotten in for confusing 14 year olds with 19 year olds, this is about best case. <laughs> I mean, Cesar, I I knew that you were coming in on the team bus, but I didn't know you'd be driving it. You're, <laughs> you're, you're 14? Really? Well, I mean, I guess this kind of stuff happens in the Dominican. Why is it that you're working on a construction job in your off time? My God. We were going to give this kid $4 million. He literally, literally, if you haven't read this story yet, gang, go find it. It's on the UT. It's on ESPN. Did, have they ever actually given the real name of this of this con artist? No, I haven't. I haven't seen it yet. Okay, no. so so this guy, unnamed, found the death certificate, birth yep. certificate, allegedly found out. Yeah, found out about a young dead man named you Cesar Altagracia, yeah. and took the dead man's identity. To then dead show child, up, dead child, dead, chi- dead yes, child, dead, chi- dead child's identity, so that he, a seventeen-year-old at the time, could show up and say he's twelve. <laughs> They're like, "You're the most developed twelve-year-old I've ever seen." I grow fast. Here at the Altagracia family, we grow fast. And since then, he dominated for a Dominican <laughs> Republic under twelve and <laughs> under fifteen team. Shockingly. Yeah. <laughs> like crushing, crushing it. <laughs> you know, do you remember how we made all of the, 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 not excuses, but we nuanced Ethan Salas's poor season. We're like, well, I mean, he's a 17 year old playing with 22 year olds. Yeah. So how about just do it in reverse? <laughs> what if you're an 18 year old playing with 13 year olds? Turns out you're really, really good. Shockingly so. So uh, thank goodness that uh, somebody figured this out. But now my confidence level in AJ not just getting duped, uh, <laughs> it's it's dropped a little bit. That's this four million dollars that we can pay Kyle Gashioka. That's this is a good this is a good story for us. <laughs> like we could really get into it because it's it's so kind of dirty and skeevy thinking about fourteen year olds making these 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 these, tra- these contracts and, and teams going out for them. But like the Padres have one of the best facilities in the Dominican, and like that's where these kids go. Um, I like and last year at the beginning of the major league season. Uh, the same thing happened coming out of the international amateur signing period where a bunch of deals got nullified because people were lying about their age. And uh, from what I understand, the authorities there had thought they had made a lot of headway in solving this. And now, and now they have such a high profile one. Uh, it, it, like it, it, it's giving me flashbacks to Manti Teo, you know, and maybe we'll get the documentary in, in eight years. Could only be so lucky. I don't think there's too much more to this. This was 2027 international draft money. So, um, I guess it's just odd to me that we're, it's not odd, kind of impressive that we're working so far ahead that we're looking for the 13 or the 14 year old. That's good. I mean, I guess that's this was the guy we were going to trade for Ellie De La Cruz in three years. Right. Exactly. Like 
on one level, I'm glad that, you know, like I, I want you on that wall. I don't know what you're doing there, but I kind of want you to be there. Um, maybe I don't need the full report. Uh, but on the other side, don't get duped by dudes that are like six four, two fifteen, walking in, going, "Well, hello, I'm a thirteen year old. <laughs> My name is Cesar Altagracia. How are you? Nice to meet you. Would you like to watch Dinosaur Train with me? <laughs> <laughs> I need my mommy. Also, do you have a Modelo? <laughs> I just spent eight hours on the construction site. Like, come on, guys. I'm I'm assuming you guys have seen the the movie The Benchwarmers from like 2004 with Rob Schneider and didn't John need Lovitz. to see it. Knew this was you know what it the was meme. About. You know the meme. Yeah, it's just yeah. the guy who hands the. T- the I am 12 with a picture of himself <laughs> yeah, and the money $20 bill inside to the umpire. And like, he's like, yeah. Oh, he's got documentation. <laughs> uh, there you go. Anyway, it's yeah. pretty much how we're doing business. Apparently uh, in the off season. Okay. Last thing I would like to say is that this would be, whenever you're listening to this, this would be a perfectly great day for the Padres to announce the signing of Ruben Niebla to a multi-year deal (laughs) to be the organization's director of pitching brilliance for years to come. Chop, chop, get on it, AJ. Stop messing around. Asleep at the wheel. Jorge Soler's getting traded. Moves are being made. There you are. You still haven't signed Niebla. Get with it. Anything else, boys? Um, just thank you for everybody for joining us as we embark on another off season filled with fun programming about our, our beloved Briars. Yeah. This yep. is way better than, uh, some baseball being played that we're not playing and being played. <laughs> like I would much rather have four months of, you know, w- us like wish casting, you know, whatever is going to happen in terms of free agency and trades and everything. than watching from the sidelines so i'm happy to be over the mountain with you guys jake cronenworth luis campusano for sonny gray and william uh william Contreras. there it is bring me my what? boy what wait what? yeah he plays for the cardinals now not the reds did you say jake cronenworth and luis campusano yeah and we get Contreras and sonny gray they need to shed money I, I've but had so do we. That's why we're trading Jake Cronenworth. <laughs> I've had three. I've had four three ninety fours. Yeah, <laughs> out of the park is is ruining your filters, man. <laughs> it's just it's wrecked your filters. We need to get this fixed. All right, that's it for this week's show. We are doing a group therapy later this week. It's exclusive to our Padres Hot Tub patrons. So if you want to be part of the community, come on in. patreoncom slash Hot Tub. Uh, it's a great deal until then and until next week's free show for chris and rafey i'm craig have a great first week in november go padres <laughs>